I mean, it's one of the biggest mysteries on earth. Who are your sources? <laughs> when you get the big news, like who's gonna win? If it was one person feeding me everything, they would have been caught by now. You were sued twice. Is it easy for you at this point to tell what is just complete BS? I'd say 95% of the stuff I get. Wow. Uh, how much are you willing to pay for this? What happened there, Steve? I don't know. I, I got it wrong. So how many producers contact you? I was like, I'll give you 2,500. Yes. What? <laughs> It's been a little frustrating. Instagram accounts take my spoilers and just post them. The problem is it's not illegal. Well, that's kind of like the show complaining about you, right? Um, Let's get back to the sources. Um, well, don't hang up on us. I mean, us. you left us. Oh my word. We are joined by Reality Steve, AKA Steve Tacos Al Carbone. It's so nice to have you here. <laughs> I haven't heard Tacos Al Carbone for... Did you just think of that or did you hear that somewhere else? Or... I just went to dinner at a Mexican restaurant and it was on the menu and I thought, that reminds me of Reality Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I haven't heard that in a while. I used to get called that a lot. All right, well, let's just jump right into where we are with Pilot Pete. We're not going to ask you for a lot of spoilers in this interview. This is mostly about you. But we do want to know, where are they in filming as far as what episode are they on? They're starting episode five this week. Okay, so then that means how many women remain? Twelve. Twelve. Already. Yeah, yeah we're, already down, we're already down to twelve. The funny thing is, and I, it's, people don't, it seems to come up every season. People don't seem to realize it in that whatever number you start with, usually 25 to 30, it takes one month in real time to get from the starting point down to your final four. And then it takes three weeks to get from four down to one. So when is it that you feel the most intel? Is it during the first few weeks or what, is, what does it look like for you? Usually, I mean, this season has been chock full of spoilers. Like, I think every date and every elimination has already been spoiled in real time on my Twitter feed and my website and Instagram account. Like, because when they stay in California, they usually have a lot of public dates, which we know, you know, concert dates or the public comes out and watches them do whatever. Mm -hmm. We had a couple of those in LA. And then for episode four, I mean, this isn't a major spoiler, but I mean, they went to Ohio. So if you're in an in a U.S. city, usually stuff is going to get spoiled. And every single date in Ohio got spoiled. So, yeah, there's a lot that's out there. So later in this interview, we're going to ask you a couple more specifics about this particular season, but we don't want to give too much away. Okay. Well, you kind of brought up the social media aspect and people are spoiling things. How much okay. has that changed for you over the past 10 years or so? It's been the biggest change, and it's made my job easier. 10 years ago, there was no Twitter, there was no Instagram. Not everybody used their phone. The show wasn't nearly as popular as it was 10 years ago. But now, not only are people witnessing the show, but they're inviting their fans like, hey, there's going to be a public date. Sign up to come out to it. Like, they're not trying to hide it. It's not like secretly this is all getting out. They know when they do a public date, everyone's got their phones and everyone's going to take photos and videos. So, you know, when you go to Ohio or something like that, yeah, every date's going to get spoiled. Now they're heading overseas, and that's more of a hit and miss. That's where basically you have to get, I have to get a little bit lucky and hope that an American tourist is in this location, um, an American tourist understands what they're witnessing, and that that American tourist then comes to me with, hey, Baxter's filming here, here's some pictures. So it doesn't always happen. So it'll slow down now that they're overseas. Well, do you ever send someone? Do you ever send your own little spy and pay an informant to follow them? No, I don't need to because it's too widespread now. And um, it comes very naturally to me uh, from anybody that sees something. They just kind of know to contact me. I've never sent anybody out um, to where, I mean, I, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, if I know they're going to be in a certain city and someone says, hey, I live in that city. I'd love to go help you out. I'm just like, yeah, go ahead. But there's usually numerous people that do that. So like when they were in Ohio, I had so many people from Ohio saying, hey, I'm going to this date. Here are some photos. Like there was, I mean, you'll see when the date airs, everybody's got their phone out. So it's like, 
of course, one of those, at least one of them are going to send it to me. So your overhead in running Reality Steve as a business is what? My server that I pay monthly and uh, my webmaster. And that's it. That's it. Wow. Yeah. Well, while we're on the subject of money, just how lucrative is this business you got going here for you? It pays the bills. And the best way I can answer. <laughs> and then some? I mean, I, I mean, I live comfortably. I'm not complaining about anything. Um, I, I never thought I'd be able to make good money on this show. I never thought this would be a full-time job, but it's been my full-time job since August of 2011. It's coming up on, we've just passed eight years now where Reality Steve is my only job. I've been able to make um, a good living doing this. Like six figures. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm Oh, yeah, he says with confidence. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I only say that only because I think it was covered in a few interviews that have been done with me where it got brought up. And it wasn't like, again, it wasn't these things where I offered it. It was a kind of a question like yourself. Like, do you make six figures? I, you know, I don't know how to answer that. I, I guess I could say no comment, but. That's I mean, boring, though. Come I, on. At this, at this point, it's just like, yeah, six figures. But is it low six figures? Is it high six figures? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a comfortable living. Put it that way. When you get the big news, like who's going to win at the end of it, where is that information coming from? And are people reaching out to you? Like I'm friends with Jed. I know he won. Pay me X amount and I'll, or he doesn't say that obviously, but he says, pay me X amount and I'll tell you. Anybody that asks me to pay them is immediately dismissed. I don't pay for information. I don't need to. I got too many contacts for this show now. If it was one person feeding me everything, they would have been caught by now. Like it, the show's gotten too big for its own britches, and there's too many people that know things, and too many people that know things that want to tell me it. So I, I can't even specify something like that. Plus, I would never give away how I got the ending or where I got it from. But yeah. usually, when I get an ending, there are a couple things that go into it. One, who's telling it to me? Two, how do they know? And three, is it someone that has told me something before in the past? Like I have to go through this vetting process of, because anybody can email me when filming's over and says, hey, I heard so-and-so one. Okay, but that's not good enough. How do you know? Um, and if they tell me how they know, okay, well then how did that information get to you? Like there's so many ways to go about it. Don't just be like, oh, okay, yeah. One person told me and that's it. Like I have to kind of vet it out. So how many producers contact you each season? <laughs> really zero really mm -hmm. there's no way these producers would ever risk their job by contacting me yeah. it just wouldn't happen well did you know i guess it was what year was that i don't know many years ago a friend of ours was producing for the show and mike fleiss hired an investigator to try to find who is the mole that is giving steve all of this intel yeah that's funny everyone sent me that clip from that show that you did with her um that was funny. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard that he did. He called, uh, they, they hired an investigator. They brought a bunch of former contestants in and just grilled them. And all these contestants are like, I don't know what he's, I don't know where he gets his info from. Why are you asking me? So it went nowhere. So it was funny though, but it did happen. She was right about that from what I've heard. You were sued twice. Obviously one of them involved yeah. trying to pay a contestants, which, which was where the, you know, the, the problem lay, I guess. Um, yeah. How do you now continue doing what you're doing? Uh, the best way to answer it is people like to tell me stuff. I, I guess people want to feel part of something. It's really no different why anybody that's at a public date or sees some sort of filming immediately contacts me and says, hey, here are some pictures or whatever. They just want to feel a part of it. Uh, I know people are so flabbergasted that people aren't asking for payment. Um, I'd say one out of every 20 things that gets sent to me, someone says, how much are you willing to pay for this? And then I immediately like, I don't pay for info. I'll get it somewhere else. Um, but yeah, people just want to feel a part of it and they just like to send me stuff. And then I just have to vet out what I'm sent. But I, I really don't need to pay for anything because it eventually will get to me. Is it easy for you at this point to tell what is just complete BS and what is actual info? Cause I feel like you would be inundated constantly. <sighs> Honestly. I think most people that do email me are looking to help. Not many, not many people are looking to screw me over and give me false information on purpose. It's happened in the past, um, but it's very rare. Most people want to help. 
And most people want to give me information that, hey, I think this could help you with uh, spoiling for this particular season. Um, but in terms of what I get, if it's an email and it's no punctuation and poorly worded, oh, this happened. It's just like, okay, I need, I need, I need a little bit more than that. I need, I need you to be able to formulate a sentence to tell me what's going on. Um, but most of the time, it's, it's like I said, most of the time, I, I'd say 95% of the stuff I get ends up being right. Wow. Uh, that's, that's told to me. It's, it's very, very little. Stuff could get lost because, because it's coming from someone that might be contacting me for the first time. Stuff sometimes can get lost in translation and maybe like a small detail of the main picture is missed, something like that. But for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Do you think you're the Bachelor franchise's biggest thorn or do you think they actually appreciate the publicity and the little boost you give them? Publicly, I'm their biggest thorn. Privately, they love it because all I'm doing is giving them free advertising. They know it, but they can never, ever back me. They can never tell their viewers, hey, check out Reality Steve. He's got all the info on our season. They'll never do that. <laughs> they, know I'm, they know I'm out there. They know what I do. They know my track record. So they, can't so they just don't address me. I mean, I, you guys cover the show. You watch the show. You probably read a lot of interviews. You've seen a lot of interviews with contestants, Chris Harrison, whoever. How many times have any one of these interviews ever brought up my name? They just don't because they're not allowed to. But privately, I've been told they don't really care because I'm just, I'm just giving them advertising for their show. Have any former contestants, once they're done with their contracts, contacted you either to correct something that you reported or just to say, hey, man? Yeah, uh, both. I mean, some people after the fact are just like, here's what really happened. Some people after the fact are just like, I, I, I really enjoy your stuff. I appreciate it. I think it's funny. Um, it's a mixture of both. Uh, but yeah, it's, they've got those contestants so paranoid about their contracts and especially dealing with me. Um, but yeah, I, I don't hear from anybody until the season's long over. It's just, that's just the way it goes. And, you know, that's fine. Um, I've been able to still spoil I don't need it from the contestants to, to spoil anything. It's just, there's so, there's so many people involved now, especially with social media, that it's so easy to contact me. I kind of go into every season, like, I don't know where I'm getting my spoilers from this season, but I'm sure I'm getting them. And then sure enough, you know, it happens. Recently, it's been a little frustrating in that there are so many now, these Johnny Come Lately Instagram accounts that pop up and take my spoilers and just post them and you know whatever their name is for their instagram account i get sent stuff all the time like hey this instagram account is reporting this and i'm like yeah i reported that two days ago all they're doing is copying cutting and pasting what i'm writing and not giving any credit that that's a little bit infuriating the problem is it's not illegal they're not doing anything wrong i couldn't report them to instagram because they're not cursing or threatening or any way they're just taking my information and putting it on an Instagram account that's, you know, I have bachelor spoilers or whatever. And then they just take what I write and put it as their own. And it's frustrating, you know, but yeah. there's nothing I can do. It's just, I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. Well, that's kind of like the show complaining about you, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. What can they do? Um, because I'm not doing anything illegal. It's a good point. No, yeah. it's the same exact thing. What happened at the end of Hannah's season with your spoilers? Yeah. You called, you called Tyler. And it said that she had picked Tyler. And then by the beginning of June, it was like, it was when I changed it. What happened? Um, again, it was one of these situations where the person that told me the information believed it to be true. And I heard it from multiple places that it was Tyler. So I was like, it must be true. Multiple people are telling me this. And it just ended up not being true. Well, one other um, season that people have a lot of concern with was Desiree's season. What happened there, Steve? <laughs> yeah, that's the only one. Um, it's crazy. That's the only one that I've ever gotten wrong from beginning to end. Everyone else I was wrong about, I was able to get the correct spoiler well before the finale aired. That one, up until finale night, I still thought she was with Brooks. I don't know. I, I got it wrong. And um, it was kind of so long ago. I don't even remember like the information I was getting and how I was getting wrong. I think I just kind of went with something without maybe vetting it as much as I should have. Uh, I just, I got, 
it just it was wrong. There was nothing, there was really no excuses for it. Tasha and JPJ, are they still together right now? What's going on there? I think so. Just based on what I'm seeing, I thought they were done. I thought they were broken up, but it looks like they're together based on what I'm seeing. Um, is this going to be long term? And are these two going to get married? No, not a chance in hell. But let them let them enjoy their little fling for the next three six months, and they'll be moving on to bigger and better things. I'm sure. I mean, it's one of the biggest mysteries on earth. Who are your sources? <laughs> um. Well, don't hang up on me. You left us. No, I got. I have another call coming in. Um, is it a source? Is What's, it a producer? What's happening? No, Who was it? Was that Mike twice? <laughs> your sister? Yeah, my sister just called. Let's get back to uh, the sources. I mean, I, I, I told you I'd have to kill you. I mean, I, it's, you know, <laughs> simple as that. I mean, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I um. I mean, there's just just know that there's so many people out there that want to and love to tell me stuff. That was safe, Steve. That was a real safe answer. Very safe. What did the, uh, what, the producer that you guys had on also said something else about me that I, I, I can't remember what it was. Was it when she said that um, Mike Fleiss is the one who actually pays you? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. I, I mean, there are people there, out there that think, you know, that I'm on ABC's payroll, which I, it couldn't be further from the truth. If you've ever listened to anything that I've said in a podcast or written about this show, I think you would understand that I'm certainly not a fan of this franchise. And I report all the negativity that goes on behind the scenes and stuff that they don't want people to know. So I don't know how I would be being paid by them. That doesn't make any sense. But I guess people love their conspiracy theories. Um, okay, we want a little, a little spoiler, not like a big spoiler for, don't give us something huge that's going to make us angry about Pilot Pete, but just something a little bit that maybe our viewers would like to know, but not that's going to ruin the season if they don't want spoilers. Okay, we, we have a repeat storyline from Colton's season. Uh, we have two pageant girls on this season that butt heads. Oh. Now, here's the thing that's different. Going into last season, it was well known because they were talked about it on the first episode. Hannah Brown and Kaylin did not like each other. Like they were friends during the pageant world. Yeah. And then they got, a, and, but then they had a falling out. And both of them from the second they stepped into the mansion were not friends with each other. The two women this season that are reigning champions of their state were fine and were friends at Miss USA. But yet, once the show started filming, one of them turned on the other one for God knows what reason. I don't know. Oh. All right. So that was part one of our Reality Steve interview. Coming up in part two. I was like, I'll give you 2500 just to tell me what the f*** happened. Do you remember the two contestants who you contacted? It was... The girl that he eliminated in episode three, I thought was... Well, we're not going to ask you who that is. So let's try this question a different way. <laughs> is Bachelor in Paradise harder? How would you get your intel from that? That's a great question, Rai Rai. <laughs> oh my word.